Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Don't get the reserve time for that as well. <clears throat> Ooh, I have good news. After this game, I can have my iced coffee. Ooh, because then we're halfway there. Six games are going to come to you on this channel today. My Valve assigned games, all in the CIS region. Uh, Sven is the Radiant last ban team. for Anchi. Now, which hero is really annoying to deal with if you're a faceless void? I would wonder. If, you're gonna, if you know you're going to deal with faces vo with faceless void. Like, I would almost say Slark, but I think Slark, Faces Void is actually pretty decent seconds against Slark, remaining. but the rest is kind of squishy against it. Five seconds remaining. Juggernaut's still Almost say Slark, but I think oh, we'll find out sooner or later. And she's looking for their last time. pick. What do they need? They have got their cores, assuming Sand King is going to be playing on the offlane. They can still swap that around. Um, Age Separation is support got for Faces Void. You're probably going to be against an Omni Knight, so you should be quite okay in terms of harassment. So you don't necessarily need a support that hangs around the lane all the time. You can be a little bit greedy with that. And Double Dimension knows this, that's why they banned out Ricky. Ricky is a support that can be rotating a bit, can be a little bit greedy there. Uh, they can go for something like that here as well. We still have a Tree Protector in the lane if they want to maybe pair something up together with that Sand King. Or like a Spirit Break or Slaughter or something like that. Still have all of those in the pool as well. Um, but yeah, you can pair something up with the Sand King to have a dual offlane. And if they want to go for that, it probably depends on the lane that Double Dimension goes for. Warlock and Keeper of the Light as supports. I'm going to assume Keeper of the Light is going to hang with the Omni Knight. And Warlock is going to hang top. So you could go for the dual lanes as well, considering your enemy is doing that as well. And just making sure that you have the better of the dual lane. Well, they're taking their time. They're probably not only discussing what they want to pick last, they probably also are discussing how they want to lane things and how they're expecting the enemy to lane things, what the enemy is going to be picking up, how they want to look at their timings, what they want to do for rotations, how they want to start things off, do they want to go for a cheeky rune snipe, something like that. There's all the things you can talk about, or perhaps someone's just, you know, going to the toilet and it's not back yet when you use it all the time you can. That's probably not the Ten case, seconds though. Remaining. Let's see, Anchi. What you going for there? Five seconds you remaining. got five seconds yes. left. That's really not that much. They go for the Earthshaker in the end. Dire team and this could go either way. They could go for Sand King or Earthshaker as the core. Um, but they also could go for the Jewel Lanes if they really want to. They could go for Earthshaker roaming around if they want to. They could go for... Uh, yeah, Earthshaker roaming around. I would, I would think that that is the case. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Double dimension. Their last one needs to be a core. Needs to be a carry that can deal with all the onslaught coming from Anchi. Core that can deal with the Sand King. A core that benefits from the Omni Knight. Juggernaut might not benefit from the Omni Knight that much since he already has a spin. If you want to have something that can deal with uh, with the Phaser's Void, that's probably going to be fairly fat. Still think... Oh, Juggernaut he does have that heal, and the heal is being made less valuable by the Ancient Operation, so maybe not the Juggernaut. <clears throat> maybe you just go for an old school Gyrocopter. Lol. Probably not, though. We'll have to wait and see. That's uh, that's how it's going to be here. We'll have to uh, see what Double Dimension decide in the 20 seconds they have left. It will be a troll in the end. I like that. I like that indeed. And uh, he will, will most likely go to the safe lane then have the Warlock to back him up. And that lane should be fairly good against the Sand King as well. They're in their strategy time right now, so they can strategize all they want. All they want, indeed. Now 
definitely hope they're done strategizing Ten soon because there's strategy time, strategy time coming to an end. Five you just heard the lady say remain. 10 seconds and then we get some more info on who's going where. Although I think as as I said, it's, it's kind of covered already. It's kind of straightforward, at least for double dimension. Fairly straightforward. Ooh, what did I do? Did I do something? No, I don't think I did. It's all good. No rigachi. Oh, when's this? It's gonna be close. Not close. Well, it is close. Both at the same level of tower. But the same... Looks like. Alright. Who? Oh no, will a tower be killed Prepare in 10 minutes? For no. Player with the first triple kill, huh? I'm thinking the Queen of Pain, Pikachu. Longest kill streak. Pikachu? Pikachu. Team with the first Roshan! Team with a troll. Alright. We already got a very deep board here for the Keeper of the Light, uh, played by. Um, I think it's EU Genius. Yes, the other one is there. Is a sponsor. So it's EU Genius that will play the Keeper of the Light on the set of the Dire, Double Dimension, Undershock on the Storm Spirit. We got Flo on the Omni Knight. It means that we got Dark on the Warlock, and he'll be supporting next level, B7 next level, uh, on the Troll Warlord. So the lanes are indeed shaping up, uh, shaping out to be like uh, like we were we were expecting them, and um, nothing really out of the ordinary there. We got no fear for the Radiant side for Anchi, playing the Sand King. He's hiding, uh, hiding in the trees. He's got ourselves an, an aggressive ward as well up against Storm Spirit. Storm Spirit is of course the core that doesn't really get away. Only thing he can do is run, and uh, Sand King can prevent him from running a bit. Um, we got Shvash playing the Ancient Apparition, Pikachu, on the Queen of Pain this time. And uh, on the bottom lane, we got uh, a dancing, grooving Sedoi on the Face of the Void, and then last but not least. It is the off lane, played by Yoki, uh, on the Earth Shaker. So he'll be the one getting the farm there, and Sand King will be the one roaming around. Looking for the Burrow Strike, we'll find it with the extra damage there from the Chilling Touch. That might be enough, but this tower is doing a lot of damage, so the first blood goes still <laughs> to, uh, well, to the Radiant team, I should say, because it was a combined effort from uh, EU Genius and Under Undershock, but uh, Storm still died. In the meantime, teleport bottom. Make sure that Ancient Separation is back bottom, helping out the Faces Void. And uh, that also means that the Keeper of the Light is now rotating uh, back uh, bottom. Because we have uh, no fear. Rotating bottom as well. Of course, he went for Burst Strike first right now, so he can't really go for any type of, um, of jungling. So he has to just come to the lane and, and help out. Bit of a wrath is coming out from Javash already. He, of course, went for the Chill and Touch first, so he has to deal with that. Can really pair up uh, with the cold feet just yet. See who they find first. Mm -hmm. Illumina's gonna come over the back of everybody. The heal comes out as well. Careful there, Shivash. You're taking a lot of damage. So does Flo though. And Flo will end up dying first, but Shivash dies in the back end from a light bomb by Evil Geniuses. He does light ball. Let's call it light balls. He does shoot light balls after all. Pop to clarity, that's something that this Sand King can take off if he wants to. King, ah, it's such a short range, look at this short range. Yeah, he has it, he has it. If he wants to, ah, the right click will be enough. He has a burrow strike to get away if needed. In the meantime, on the bottom, there's a 1v1 fight again going slow. He's uh, pounding away at the creeps and at Sadoi if he has the chance. Pushing the wave out with the heals that he does as well. Just a sentry though. They didn't see that there was no observer on the map. 
That's a, that's a waste of 100 gold. Let's see if they're gonna waste another 100 gold on that. He might have seen that that ticked away. That would be good. In the meantime, Queen of Pain with an arcane rune. He's not alone though. Keeper of the Light comes to help the uh, Storm Spirit there as there comes a sentry and uh, instantly the Observer gets uh, removed as well. No real harassment on Pikachu. Sorry, forgot the last hits in the knives. There you go. Three minutes into the game. Oopsie. Troll is, uh, is the one on top of the list right now. He's a very happy troll. And happy troll, how often do you see that, you guys? He has got no opposition on his lane. He has complete free farm. Earthshaker went into the jungle instead to uh, get some more luck with the uh, with the farmings and with the levels, as he wasn't going to get that much on top lane anyway. Dancing against the rune in the meantime, wasn't able to harass this storm a bit more. St although storm did want to go for the rune, but couldn't get it. Ooh, teleport out from the keep of light, comes back bottom, make sure that flow turns around. Sand King is still in a position to maybe make something happen though, he's coming from the side. He's got that level 1 burrow strike, so again, that's such a short range. He needs to be very close in range before he can actually make that happen, make something happen with that. So, let's take a look at the lineups. I see what we are expecting from these teams uh, throughout this game because um, we have a very different scenario from from previous two games that we've had. Obviously, previous two games both had a Dyer's nice start rate. None of the swords for this one. The Night Stalker makes games maybe a little more predictable. No sorceries avail. Repel comes out, but the bash is still there. Is there a burst strike? There is indeed, and uh, with the chilling touch, they do enough damage. The last hit going to Javash. Illuminate coming from the side, but this keep of the light has already run, and he knows he's already running. Oh, he's over the rune. There he goes. All right. So what are we expecting from this game so far? I think Anshi has the has a bit better draft at the moment, a uh, bit easier no, no, no. draft yeah. as well. If you ask me, a uh, bit clear cut what they want to do. So they want a Chronosphere, enemy people, drop a ice blast on them as well as a Sonic Wave, preferably epicenter. They've got some Wombo combo things going on here, guys. Echo Slam. They they've got all the Wombo combo potential in the world, and then on top of that, they've got some pick off potential. If they get some, some vision out and Queen of Pain can jump some money, you can coordinate that with an Ice Blast or with a Burrow Strike. With a Blink, Burrow Strike, or with a Blink, Fisher. Like, they, they got a fairly easy, executable lineup. You know what they want to do. That is something that, obviously, DD can use to their advantage, as they also know what Angie can do and what they want to do. Now, Angie themselves, they, they need to work around this. They have... Uh, a lot of uh, push coming in the form of Illuminate. They've got some team fight in the case of a Warlock, but they can only use it defensively because they're always going to be out team fought if they can, uh, if they, if they get jumped Double by damage. enemy teams. They well, if they jump someone else, if they jump Anchi, then Anchi can always retaliate because there's always something that they have from the amount of good team fight ultimates that they have. So they need to. Uh, Use it defensively or only on pick in pickup style, if you will. Only for a couple of people, if it's not a full blown out five versus five fight. <laughs> Denied. Illuminate coming out doesn't really do that much. Still only level two in the storm. Not able to do anything. Not getting out of there, even though he is level six. But the uh, stun was uh, perfectly timed. Things. So another thing that uh, Dimension needs to be doing is get that storm up. The storm has a, has a bit of a tough job there. So Cold Feet comes out as well. So this is definitely a dead, a dead Omni Knight. Couple of hits needed. Illuminate will still clip. Faces Void, but he can just get out of that with a time walk and no fear. Ooh, he does get hit by that, but he's invisible right now. Invisible all the time. They probably can catch him. He is still. Uh, he has got some stick charges, so it's not enough. Unfortunately, for him. oh, now it is. Never mind. He got out. No, he didn't. 
didn't get out, but maybe Eldershot doesn't either, because he's just kind of low on mana. He can try to jump away. Uh, he does get some more mana for the keep of the light, so though he has to be careful. As only Knight comes back as well. Well, good for Dini to get a kill out of that. It's been a while though. Woo! Pikachu, hello! Sonic waving uh, everybody there, but the shrine still used. Got to back off. If this shrine wasn't up, that would have been a whole different ballgame right there. So, things that Dimension need to do. Jump people with Storm. Stupendous. Get pickoffs. Don't go for for five versus five full blown out team fights because they just can't win those. Maybe in the right timings they can, as in if they know that certain spells are on cooldown, or if they kill off the right person first, or if they can get some lockdown, or if they get a silence on the right person at the right time. Uh, but other than that, they have to go for pickoffs and then try to take down towers. They do have a very good tower lineup, um, basically because of the troll warlord. That's the only. That's really the only reason why that is a good. A troll we're not line up. Well, we'll see if uh, troll can uh, get himself online fast enough to be able to help with that. He is still highest on the last last hits, and the net worth is uh, only surpassed by the Queen of Pain, who of course uh, got herself got herself two kills already on the board. Pain without consequence. And now with the regen rune rotates top. Why not? Four people on the top lane, only one missing is the face of Void. They don't need to face a Void yet. Fisher coming out, Illuminate. Going for Yoki. Yoki is the bait right now. In comes Sand King from the back. They know that Dark is sitting there with the silent or with the slow. And they now know Keep of the Lights there as well. And they find him and they kill him. That's a very easy quick pick off killing spree for Pikachu. And the rest knows that this is bad, a bad timing to show themselves. So they back off. Troll is going to farm in the jungle. But by doing that, really great ward. That is a good ward. How do you... That's a tick. Radiance middle tower they know exactly where the troll is. They can kill him off if they really want to. Uh, preferably they take the tower first, of course, which it still is something that they do. But it is still uh, really nicely done. Word. Radiance middle tower Coming out attack. from uh, from Anshi. In the meantime, Flo is still I'll farming again. Tribute. And uh, I think it's kind of it's kind of lucky that Double Dimension only lost their Keeper of the Light in that fight. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Hello, what you doing there, buddy? A little bit of a Radiance walkabout. Did he get the route? Attack. No, a little bit, a bit of a walkabout. Just taking a scenic route, it seems. Chronosphere, so Sonic Wave. How many night doesn't stand a chance against that? Not a chance. Tier one tower on the top lane died. And uh, tier 1 tower on the bottom lane um, could be the next target. Storm jumping forward, looking to try and go for the sentient operation, but there's going to be teleported from the Earthshaker. Attack. We'll try to go for Fisher. Is there any backup? There looks to be a backup. Nothing hits anymore as it did just jump away. He's, of course, got that Radiance arcane wound as well, helping attack. out. Luminate still clips it away a bit. I'm looking at things. Oh. Well, that's the problem. Out of mana, can't jump away. He knows he has to be careful, but David can run away. Still a level one mana leak after all. Sun duration is really not that tower long. Is under attack. So so far, I would definitely put um, I would definitely Radiant's put um, Anchi ahead attack. right now. Uh, let's take a look at the net worth. See, that's also the case. It's not that out of control just yet, though. But uh, they're ahead, and you can you can tell. <laughs> He's planning on buying a lot of wards, you guys. True support right there. No matters for him. Normally a uh, common item that you see in Age Generation. Mango eaten. Let's see. This uh, repel is only level 1, so it doesn't last very long at all. His heal doesn't actually heal right now. So keep up the light. In a bit of trouble, but Undershot coming in to try and save the day. He can Sidori get himself out? He's got another time walk. He can't out just in time. Jawash might not be so lucky, he doesn't have a time walk, he ends up going down indeed. Burst Spike still hits on the Storm Spear, so he can do nothing but just to hit and hope that he lives. Undershock, he'll end up dropping as Queen of Pain gets a last kill right there, a last hit. It looks like, to be like it was the last kill indeed as well. Two for one. Undershock just trying to save his two, his two fellow comrades and ends up dying in the fray. Did of course end up saving that Keep of the Light, but that's not worth it. That's not worth it for sure. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Dyer's structures are fortified. 
We're gonna pay him with a double damage room. Does flip on the warlock. Warlock hands around only now. Radiance hands around, top but tower is under attack. They can't really initiate. They need to storm for that. Storm is Dyer's on his way back. He looks attack. to be going for a blood zone first, so he's not actually going for the orc at first. Orc at first for Queen of Pain still though. Dyer's middle tower has fallen. I would say that's bad news for the storm. I'm over here. Oh, Sadoi. And he walked around so much that he's no longer got any mana to deal with. Queen of Pain comes in though, perhaps she can make something happen. In comes the chaotic offering. Pikachu has got a blink available in three seconds to be able to make it. Oh! oh! Woo! That's the type of plays of Wombo Combos that we're talking about. The bait was there. Pikachu, he was the, the he, was, he was the sacrificial lamb, but he, it was just a false bait. False bait indeed. Echo Slam coming out. Sonic Wave coming out, Ancient Apparition Oath coming out. Oh, and it wasn't even all of it, you guys. It could be. There's five heroes that have the potential to all come together in a, bu in a beautiful symphony of spells where the entire enemy team just dies in one second. It could happen. Just, I'm letting that thing sink in for a bit. Just think about it. Worthy tribute. Into the chronosphere, where Queen of Pain lands a sonic wave over everybody as well, and Ancient Operation gets the Ice Blast the time. exactly over the chronosphere, like perfect match. And then the Echo Slam to just finish it off. Yeah, it could happen. Whew, okay, so Angie had a really good fight. <laughs> A really good fight right there. Two more tower ended up dropping as well, and, and I think Radiance more than anything. Is under attack. Radiant structures so, are So yeah, DD is behind, but I think more than anything, their spirits are kind of behind. They know that they're like they, they're four K behind, right? But after a fight like that of five K, about after a fight like that, mentally you feel like you're probably more behind than just five K. And I think that's a bigger win because that means that they're not going to be as aggressive across the map even though that, that is the place that you should do. They should try to get pick up if they find them. Which they look for right now, Warlock. Getting the slow off, finding Yoki, Queen of Pain away. Uh, with the blink, a liberation ulti coming out. Only hits on the Omni Knight though. Burrow Strike still up on two and Pikachu. Not got a Sonic Wave at all. Boy, does he wish he had. He would have had a beautiful angle to do it from as well. In comes the Fisher. This troll will not let live for very much longer. He'll end up dying and a three-man Chronosphere coming out right now. There's no mana for an epicenter, unfortunately. There comes the Sonic Wave still up on two with the genius still uh, dying there as well as his teammate Omni Knight not able to get away. Two living Storm Spirit and Warlock living to tell the tale but I don't think it's till they want to have told at all, as it doesn't look good for them. And this was a fight with minimum resources from Anshi. They did not have the Sonic Wave at the time that they wanted. They did not have money for an epicenter. There was a perfect three-man Chronosphere, and most of the team just stood there it's like, yeah, shit. Sorry, part of my French. Wish we could do something more here, buddy, but we can't really follow up on your, your Chronosphere that looks so good. So, uh, yeah, unfortunately, that is... That is how things go sometimes, but even without the massive potential for follow-up they have, they still ended up winning that fight handily, and they didn't lose a single person. They were perfectly able to weave in and out of the fight, and I know I'm probably overpraising them right now, but it's so fun to see. So fun to see how well, they can do that. Or maybe how the mansion lets them do that, because that's of course a different story as well. They are, they are struggling. And they, they seem to be, at the moment, a little bit outmatched. Troll's still very farmed, but what can a troll do by himself? Not enough at this stage. Illuminates to try to slow the push down as the troll dies in the top lane to, due to the Earthshaker and the Sand King. Dynamic duo. Aghanim Scepter being built. I mentioned this during the draft, how I said that 
you probably are going to force Omni at, um, the Keeper of Light to not build an Agadim Scepter because there is an ancient apparition in the game. But maybe at this point they feel like they needed to try and hold the waves back to try and make sure that they can delay this game as long as possible because they know that they're not going to be able to do anything in this early stages of the game anymore. And that is the question, can they hold long enough? And the difficult part is too, let, let's say Keeper of the Light has his Agadim Scepter. Blinding Light is of course uh, really Dyer's great, but there is a lot of people that can get to the back of the fight. Oh, hello. Yeah, you're dead. There's a lot of people that can jump to the back of the fight to kill off the Keeper of the Light. Peter Payne can jump there, Earthshaker, Sand King. And even face his void if he wants to, which generally he won't, but he could if he wants to. And I'm not talking about ancient operation because if he's able to, to get a ice blast on him already, that's already really good. The poor, poor ancient operation. I say that, but this guy is actually a lot poor. 1200 gold. And I, if I find this an interesting item. Uh, interesting build. We already saw the upheaval doing work though, so I, I like the upheaval. upheaval. But not even a single point in Fatal Bonds. I know that they don't want a team fight anyway, but it could be. It could be worth it for them to just have that yeah. one point in there. Hello, what's happening here? Oh, he missed it! Pikachu, please! Now Storm Spirit comes in, he goes for the Vortex, gets the Queen of Pain, Queen of Pain, you're dead! One mistake, it's all it took! Unfortunately, for him. But fortunately for Storm, because that was a godlike streak down, and that was 900 gold going the way of the Storm. And Bloodstone charges. He's got 13 right now. Not too bad. Let's see what they can do with this smoke. Radiance Middle Tower. Troll is under charge. Or being the bait. One of the two. Jumping forward. Sankin gets it. Oh, he broke the smoke. He might have uh, made a little bit of a uh, boo boo there. But at least he uh, made sure that the team knows that the smoke was there. Sand King down for the for a while. Chronosphere coming in. In comes Ancient Operations Ball. Up on two. Oh, the other offering. Up on four though. But the chase is there. And Anchi, they do not want to let this get away. They want to try to go for more, but they can't find anybody. Queen of Pain only just respawned, only just joined the fight. At least, at the very least, Anchi is able to make sure that there's no Roshan being taken right now by double dimension. But, and then they got a trade out of it. I think it, it, it's a good thing for them that they did, but it's uh, it's still a tricky, tricky play. Uh, I feel like they could... I feel like one of the teams could have gotten more, but I guess the fact that neither of them didn't is a tribute to both of the teams. They knew when to back off and how to back off, more importantly, only leaving the Omni Knight behind. And on the, uh, the other side... They knew that they were strong enough to continue chasing. Let's see. Storm jumping in. He has a repel already. Wants to try and make something happen here. Jumps himself out. Now the time chances to try and go back in time to steal the Aegis. But it doesn't look like he's going to get the chance. They knew exactly where he was going to hide. And Roshan should be secured here by Anshi. Luckily for Storm, he had quite a bit of charges on his Bloodstone. He's already back up alive again. Unfortunately, he did have to pay some charges for that. So he's... Uh, He's down again to nine. 1k gold left for Genius to get himself the Agonim Scepter. Dyer's top Who did he just recall? Under attack. He recalled someone, it didn't come. The time. Odd. Probably took some damage. Might have been Storm. Storm is, uh, is now going for the Orca, by the way. But of course, that is uh, way way behind the Queen of Pain, who already has hers for a while. And sitting on that Aegis, might be able to make something happen on the top lane. And uh, perhaps, even if there's no hero coming around, they can try to make something happen to the tier. 
to tower. Well, I would be, uh... Oh, wait a second. Bottom lane. The Sand King might be in trouble. In comes Yoki, saving Grace. Sand King, okay for the moment. Sidoy looks for the Chronosphere. They're looking at least for a kill. We'll go for this Keeper of the Light who gets bashed and dies. Doesn't get the Storm Spirit, unfortunately. Those Storm Spirits uh, teleports away. In the meantime, uh, top lane. Queen of Pain, the Nation Declaration, decided to not join the side bottom and instead still go for that tier 2 tower, which they got. And uh, now their job is to try and push down mid and see if they can get the last tier 2 that's standing on the map on the side of Double Dimension. Still going uh, quite okay for Angie. They, 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 they dropped a bit here. That was probably around the time where Queen of Pain also died. I uh, got picked off. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. But, um, and she's still the dominating position in the game. I'm thinking about how double dimension can come back in this game. It's, it's, I got, I gotta Dyer's be honest, it's not looking good for them because attack. they are a team that thrives up on pickoffs and, and maybe some, some split pushes with, uh, not none towers, but in terms of creep pushing the waves back with the keep of the light. And then just basically has a pickoff and then gets pickoffs into pickoffs. Not necessarily a big full blown team fight, but just, you know, falls out of control type of thing. And, and to do that, you need to start strong. And they didn't. All wands will break. And that's, I'll that could be a tribute. problem. And the, p the person that can make something happen there, the most of all, is Storm. Storm likes to zip around and get those pickoffs and get, go to the back lines, you know, kill off those supports kill off the squishy people but you got yourself a chronosphere that can just you can just drop it over the over the the storm spirit and he can't do anything and he dies fast if he's if he's st stuck and then you also got yourself a queen of pain that has an orchid that can basically do the exact same thing but then they're just silencing and and it's really difficult for storm to then ju just do storm things then you're going to rely on other people to help you out with that, which is, of course, a troll could help out with that, but you kind of want to have an initiating tool with that. Not necessarily a, uh, a shadow blade, which you sometimes see, uh, but any, I don't know, any any kind of initiation would help with that. It's, uh, it's an uphill battle. Let's put it that way. We'll see what they, what they decide to do, because obviously when you're playing a game, you have an entirely different read than when you're actually than when you're actually looking at a, at a helicopter view, seeing everything that happens and knowing the exact net worth of everybody. It looks like Anchi is being quite passive though. I feel like they they are ahead to the point where they can force the issue a bit, but it is still very scary going pushing into a keeper of the light and a troll. Oh, hello, Storm. That was a really long zip on the engine or on the on the Earthshaker right here. And he might actually get the kill with that. He Echo Slam comes out. He does go end up going invisible. He does live. Scary though. Lucky rune. Of course he does. Lucky rune indeed. Stormhouse, Storm Spirit, teleporting back to base, even though Pikachu is uh, pushing the wave. Wanted to be able to dive if needed. Worthy tribute. I think the next thing that we're gonna have to wait for is the next Roshan. Might take a little time. Oh, I forgot to change the title. Damn it. Dyer's 
Dyer's middle tower is under attack. All right, I did it. Queen of Pain getting jumped upon and Luminate's coming out as well, but she BKBs. Is she actually trying to on doing this? I'm not sure if that's the play. In comes the Golem as well. In comes that percentage, doesn't actually do anything. The Burrow Strike does still hit on the Queen of Pain on the Keep of the Light, but No Fear is not able to do most of the damage at all. With that, from the side, Mana Leak. Alright, EUG still dies. Teleport out from the Warlock. And the rest just gets himself out. Alright. Alright. Hey, just... Let's recap what happened here. A BKB charge was used for Queen of Pain. But also... Rock Golem. Yes. Chaotic Offering, used for Warlock. A kill on the Keeper of the Light. Epicenter used on the Set of Sand King. I still would put it... You know what, normally I would consider this uh, still a fa in favor of Anchi, but I feel like since they are ahead by as much, I feel like an even trade at this point is actually a win for Double Dimension. As, uh, well, that's definitely not a win for Double Dimension, or perhaps it can be. Echo Slam comes out still as well, and Yoki, he is still visible. They pop the dust, still ends up going down one for one for the moment, as uh, A Ultimate does not clip on the shock anymore. Again, trades, I feel like, are in favor of Double Dimension. There's a couple of things that that, is, that a trade means. Wait a second, hold that thought. Warlock, I don't think you should be here. Bar Strike hits him, and he gets bashed and killed. Dominating Sedoi right now, as Queen of Pain is looking for another target. Can she find the... Yes, she can. The Silas came out perfectly in time, but she needs some more damage coming out. Nice lining light, perhaps... No, it didn't. The, uh, the Soul Burn didn't end up uh, getting the kill there. Keeper of the Light can teleport out in the end all right so trades let me just talk to you about what trades actually do if you have a trade means that one of your team died one of your enemy team died as well or at least a massive kill as the situation is still cleaned up the uh <laughs> didn't see that you guys sorry <laughs> clean up the key road light in the base um time is money if you lose one person, that's of course bad news, but if you enemy, your enemy team also loses a person, that means they're not going to push for a little while longer. That means they're not, they're giving you some space, they're giving your other four heroes that are alive some more time to get some farm up on the map, because generally they're not going to be as aggressive as they otherwise would. So a trade is amazing for double dimension. A trade is a win. Obviously a loss is still a loss, but a trade is definitely a win. An even trade, that is. I need to specify that, I guess. <laughs> Alright. Doesn't mean that they're not out of the woods yet. Uh, they have to They have to hold on for quite a while longer. Uh, we do have the acronyms now, and the Keeper of the Light had it for a little while, actually. Um, so he needs to just make sure that he constantly pushes those waves out. But there comes a problem with that, because it also means that if he pushes the waves out, means that he gets the money, and his teammates are not farming, and his teammates need the gold too. So it's very important for them to coordinate when they're going to push out where, and who is going to push out what. Farm distribution when you are behind is way more important than farm distribution when you're ahead even though it's still it's still important but farm distribution when you're behind you're so limited on resources that you have to make sure that the resources go to the right places to the place where it's most needed and to the place where to the person that is about to finish an item for example and then also as a core you got to be able to say okay you know what i got my item support why don't you finish your X item before I do anything more anymore. So it's uh, it's a tough balance to walk with uh, with the limited amount of farm they're getting, and and Anchi is doing a good job at making sure that they have limited amount of farm because they keep the pressure on. They have good control over the dire jungle, as you can see. Three of the dire heroes right now, three of double dimension, are in the radiant jungle, as that is the only place apart from the lanes that are pushing into towers, the only place that they can get some farm. In the meantime, top lane. Storm chasing down this Queen of Pain. Queen of Pain gets a silence off herself. She still has the ages, of course. And it is daytime. 
Radiant's Daytime is tower. good for attack. double dimension. I'll take your tribute. And that also means that Anchi probably doesn't want to push into daytime. Oops, hello. They have uh, the gem, of course, Masan King, so they can just keep that map control for double dimension. Control. And to a minimum. He really wants that gem, huh? Radiance Ooh. top tower. Is Good thing he doesn't have it yet, because uh, otherwise he would lose it. Look at how much follow there is for like one one person only has to catch someone. Nice. Radiance top tower has fallen. So much follow up for one stun. Nice catch by uh, by the storm, of course. Getting an extra tower gold makes a difference. As I just talked about, how important the farm is when you're behind. And the distribution of farm. Getting a tower is just giving some extra money to all the pockets. So, good stuff, good stuff. And she is continuously trying to find Kakao to see if he finds this one. TP out. There needs to be um, needs to be some bashes if you want to be able to do that. He didn't have the bashes. Hello. Regeneration. Hey, remember when I talked about initiation? He, he ended up did. Still getting a blink dagger, so that's good stuff right there. Hello. How are you doing? Echo slamming, troll, burrow strike as well. Blinding light is there, but the chronosphere is there as well. The epicenter already kills off the warlock. The heal still comes out from the troll. Oh, ooh, nice. Eaten of the cheese for the face of Void. The silence is not going to be enough to kill Aftershock. He is able to zip himself away. I don't think that Omnidon has such powers though. So he doesn't end up dying. Blinding Light uh, back to the low ground there from the Keeper of the Light. Still though, three down on the side of Double Dimension. The only two survivors are the Storm Spirit and the Keeper of the Light. And that means that Anchi can push into the base of Double Dimension. Now how far they can push into? And depends on how adamant they are on, on defending and letting maybe one lane Iraqs go to, f to make sure that they can at least have the one fight with the troll Dyer's present. And they're, at least, they're at the moment actually fighting in two different places at the same time. Middle lane was pushing in Dyer's as well. For a fortification coming out. Tower is actually healing again Dyer's as the backdoor protection is activates. Their backdoor protection was off again. Interesting. Well, every little bit helps. Troll's back alive. Tier threes and barracks saved. And double dimension lived to see another day. And they buy some time for themselves to get some more farm up. Still, it's only Storm and Troll that really have anywhere near the amount of farm that you want to have. Even then, it's not it's not great. This guy. This is the poorest of them all. He gave priority, obviously, to the Keeper of the Light. It's like, genius, you get yourself your Aghanim Scepter. I'll come second. Uh, he did end up... Did he end up buying a gem? Did he just end up losing his gold? I think he just ended up losing his gold, didn't he? Oh, hello. Silence is there. BKB gets popped though. You gotta be careful there. On the shark, is able to just get back. Popping the BKB on the Queen of Pain is very useful. That means next time you got him. Something that you shouldn't do. There was a troll. It was like farming. He needs to farm. Uh oh. Worthy Using a shrine in the base. Yeah, my bad. 
things were being made there. And they're fighting over some uh, some creatures there too. And they're of course worrying where the enemy is because they don't have any vision. They have one ward up still. This is it. The one ward. It's about to disappear and then they're gonna be in the dark. They obviously see some illusions here and they saw the sand king just now but they cannot they cannot leave the base. It is so damn scary, you guys. And that is why we know that there's really nothing happening on the side of the map yet. We have a fleet of paint farming. We have a void farming in this jungle. We have an ancient operation farming in the jungle as well. And so the 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 map control, it's fully in hands of Anchi for sure. But at the same time, not as much as it seems. At least not as much as it seems to double dimension, let's put it that way. Over here now. I wonder if that is the Russian translation for brutal sabotage. Right? Next Roshan, I'm sure that Angie's that that's what they're waiting for right now. Let's see how long they're gonna have to wait. Uh, quite a long time. Quite a long time indeed. Unlucky for them. Unlucky indeed. Two minutes and a half. Double damage. Meantime, double dimension. This is like when to see. It's a test of patience. When to see who wants, who's gonna, who's gonna risk it first. Whose need for greed is is coming to the service first. Who wants to just farm outside the base and think, ah, you know, just this one creep. I can take one more wave, probably. Who's it gonna be? And will that person be right? Obviously, this troll. Already, he's like, yeah, be careful. Smoke up. They've had enough. They want to do a joint effort to try and make something happen. I don't blame them. Otherwise, they're just sitting down. They know that they can't afford the enemy team to have an Aegis. They can't afford it to have a Roshan. Smoke on smoke action right here. Let's see who finds who first. Hello, high ground. They know Queen of Pain jumps forward. Has her BKB active. Already silences up the Omni Knight. And in comes the Chronosphere. And actually, Stormspear jumped in to the Chronosphere. The other cover coming out as well, but it doesn't do anything. Barely tickles Anji. Teleport out by Dark. He's able to make himself uh, scarce. Storm was able to zip himself away, but the Omni Knight and the Troll, not so fortunate. In the meantime, Keeper of the Light. He has got a gem in his inventory. Did manage to end up buying that one as we do have the storm still dying. Keeper of the Light manages to teleport out. Too slow for Yoki to discover him, but in the meantime, tier 3 tower on mid. That's where Angie's at. That's where Sudoi, Pikachu, and No Fear are pushing down the base of double dimension. Buyback from the storm there. There's a buyback available on the, on the troll as well as. Um, as on the Omni Knight, Omni Knight obviously doesn't need it, but perhaps they want to make something happen. Entire lane of racks already down in the mid lane. Storm jumping forward. Uh, Queen of Pain very aggressive there and did not have her ages anymore, so... Uh, or at all. So, a little bit too deep, you guys. It's just a bit too aggressive. So, just one lane of racks. That's all there is to it. The buybacks were worth it, of course. And that is something that they have to be careful with next time around, because next time around they won't have them. Main thing here, after this fight, the Aegis is still at the Beatles shop, including Cheese. Alright, the things came out, they know. Hello. Sidori cannot afford to die. Nice Roshan bash. They cannot afford this Roshan to fall into the wrong hands. This goes for either team. 
There is no chaotic offering available, but there is an epicenter and there is an echo slam. Asian Operation Ulti will not actually hit anyone, and the Chronosphere catches both the cores of Double Dimension. First one going, it's it's no one. It's no one at all. As Omni Knight makes sure that his cores stay alive for the time being, but he can't do anything against the troll. But the troll knows he has to buy back. He has to come back right now. Can teleport back to the shrine. He's not going to do that just yet, though he is just walking about and he knows he can't get back on time. He is just walking. He can't get back to the fight. He can't save the ages. They're going to have to let it go. Nobody of Anchi actually died. Double dimension. It was so close for them to save to save their troll, to save their strong spirit with that guardian angel. Omni Knight paid for that with his life, of course. But still, they're not able to make that fight happen as Storm Spirit does end up dropping. Nice coordination there, Aegis in the hand of Queen of Pain with some extra cheese on top for the faceless void for flavor. And now mid they go. Maybe you rotate on top though. The rest of his team is already top. Pikachu could go for that top lane now too. Top the tower is almost down attack. anyway. This is a fight they almost Dyer's have to just try to not take. Burrow Strike actually still hits on the troll and he already bought back. He BKBs, gets repelled as well and tries to teleport out. Manages to teleport out. No bashes. Dyer's top barracks are under attack. Dyer's top barracks. Top barracks die. 24 seconds before the storm is back up, before the warlock is back up. In the meantime, of Queen of Pain is just making life difficult for the supports. Radiance bottom tower. Kill off the keeper of the light. He was forced to buy back. Warlock didn't initially buy back, still is in base. He's just waiting for the storm spirit anyway. There's one more fight left in double dimension. They've got this one fight still with the chaotic offering. With all the spells they have. Radiance bottom tower. Ah, uh, yeah. That was the chaotic offering. That was Storm Dead again. That is an echo. That's game, you guys. That is absolute game. There is no chance for Double Dimension to get this as a win just yet. And that means that uh, this game puts Angie as a 1 1. And Double Dimension, unfortunately for them, still haven't gotten a single win to their name. But they get more chances, they get more games.